have the next comic. He is a regular at comics. He's a regular at Laugh Lounge, Gotham. You've seen him here before. Let's give a warm welcome for Bill Sella. Hi, Laura. I'm going to try to keep the energy at the same level. I'm <laughs> not sure uh, most of you here do recognize me from my extensive career as an extra. I've been in movies and television a lot recently. I was even on the uh, last season of The Sopranos, which is a big thrill for me. I got to sit at the bar at the Bada Bank Club. Thank you very much. You saw that one. I got to pretend to drink alcohol and look at topless girls for like four hours. Quite a stretch for me. A brilliant performance. When the shoot was done, they told me the compensation was going to be $75. I thought that was fair, so I paid them. <laughs> hey, if I'm wondering, did they give you real alcohol when you do a scene at the Vitamin Club? Well, unfortunately, they don't. The booze is fake, but it's only appropriate because so are most of the boobs on the dancers. But uh, the big difference between fake boobs and fake booze is you can have a good time still with the fake boobs. <laughs> anyway, I had uh, some oysters for lunch. They're supposed to be good for guys. I think one of the expressions is they put lead in your pencil. Well, uh, that'd be great if I had somebody to write to. <laughs> sure could use a pen pal right about now. You know, not necessarily a long-term commitment, but one of those sex buddies that seems so popular these days. Sex without the headaches of romance or commitment. You like this idea, huh, son? You know, it sounds a little degrading to both parties, if you ask me, and uh, I hope to be degraded as soon as possible. <laughs> if you think about it, it's really a good way to keep in practice until the right girl comes along. The other way I practice now is only good if the right girl comes along and she's really into having her penis stroked by my right hand. <laughs> now, uh, the last girl I dated, she was only in her late 20s, so needless to say, we had different ideas about lots of things. One of those things, of course, was sex. My idea was, let's have it. <laughs> Her idea was, let's not. She said she didn't want to have sex with anyone unless she was in love with them. Come on, guys, you can tell I'm fucking lovable. But she couldn't, so after about a month, we went our separate ways. Thankfully, she was into oral sex, so the month was at a total loss. <laughs> we did that a lot, and it was a mutual thing, you know. I tried to tell her it's better to give than to receive, that it's the Christian thing to do, but she insisted I do my part as well, and normally I don't mind, but that's when it's foreplay to be followed by actual screwing. This, this just went on forever, forever. Yeah. and there was no light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. I asked why we could do this to each other without being in love, but not actual intercourse, and her response was that, her generation doesn't consider oral sex to really be sex. Wow. Wish her generation was around when I was in high school. <laughs> I would have minded those oral exams as much. But what she says I think is true because I saw a survey on the internet. Well, actually, I was Googling teen blowjobs and this survey popped up. <laughs> it said that 50% of all girls between ages 15 and 19 have performed oral sex. Now, they weren't so sure about the other 50% because they couldn't understand them with their mouths full. <laughs> anyway, uh, Yankee third baseman Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod, is supposedly having a uh, torrid affair with uh, recently divorced Madonna. I guess Cher was unavailable. But, uh, supposedly there's even a rumor that there's a sex tape floating around with the two of them. And i got to be honest, that's one sex tape I'd like to see. Finally, A-Rod performing in a tight spot. <laughs> but, you know, again, it is, it is Madonna outside of the city. <laughs> hey, Papa, don't preach. Come on. But, uh, I'm sure she thinks she has a nice young stud there now, but when well, October rolls around and she finds out, like the rest of us, that that's one month he never rises to the occasion. <laughs> This guy's a bigger choke artist than the Boston Strangler, <laughs> as opposed to Madonna, who's never been known to choke on anything. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was over at the Applebee's in Times Square last week. It's a real big one. They have three different floors. I guess you could say it's a restaurant that sucks on many different levels. <laughs> but uh, I was there a little while, and I told the waitress I needed to go to the bathroom. She said, okay, go down and a little to the right. Now, I almost always go down, and unless I'm aroused, but usually a little to the left. But I tried it her way, and there really wasn't that much difference. I just had to dry off the other shoe for a change. But, uh, well, 
I was in the bathroom, I noticed that they had a, a, a baby changing table in the men's room. Now, is that where you go to exchange your baby if you're not happy with it? <laughs> I'm kidding, that's what I'm doing, kid. But what struck me about this particular table was that next to the brand name, there's a little sign in Braille. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you guys, but I very rarely see a blind man in the men's room changing a baby. <laughs> now, in all fairness, he doesn't see me either. <laughs> anyway, I uh, ran into a buddy of mine at the bar on my way in. I hadn't seen him for a while, so he offered to buy me a beer. You know, I, of course, said yes. Who am I to offend anyone? So we finished up our drinks, and, you know, me being a keen observer of proper bar etiquette, bought him a drink. Now... Now that's my money being spent, Mr. Bud Light decides he's in the mood for a 12-year-old scotch on the rocks with a fucking twist. <laughs> now I remember why I didn't see him in a while, the cheap bastard. <laughs> then again, it's not really his fault, you know. He didn't come up with these bar rules. Things happen in bars that just don't happen everywhere else. It's probably because everybody's half drunk. I know they're also half sober, but I like to say half drunk because... I'm an optimist. <laughs> Thank you. But really, you can run into the same people at any other retail establishment. Believe me, nobody's buying anybody anything. Imagine running into a buddy at the record store. Hey, Bill, what do you got there? The new Apple record? That's on me, man. Good to see you. Now, that doesn't happen because Tower Records doesn't have a happy hour. That's why. <laughs> same thing at a drugstore. Plenty of drugs. No booze. If there was, you might hear a conversation like this at the checkout line. Hey, Bill, what you got there? A box of condoms. They're on me, man. <laughs> well, I was kind of hoping they'd be on me at some point in the near future, but if you insist. <laughs> you know, maybe just turn them inside out when you're done trying them on. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Come on, that would be good penal hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing you see at the bars, you don't see too many other places, is that the employees will tell you when they're getting off of work. If you're minding your own business, having a beer, the bartender will come over. I'm getting off now. We're changing shifts. What the fuck are you telling me for? You need a ride home? <laughs> I'm the one who's been drinking all day. <laughs> I know. The desired response is for me to tip them. So here's a tip. Don't leave while I'm still doing some drinking. <laughs> please, don't be like me. They'll tip everyone you're done tonight, please. <laughs> Another thing about the bars, they make the bar stools very uncomfortable, don't they? I mean, do they want us there or not? Maybe they don't want me there. But in general, they're made out of the hardest wood or metal they hardly ever have a cushion. You know, what torture or design these things? It's almost as if they weren't meant to be sad and freight the 12 hours they done. <laughs> I even did a stool softener once before I went out there. That didn't help at all. <laughs> yeah, I just spent some time on an even more uncomfortable seat. I gotta read those labels a little more carefully. But whatever you do, let me leave you with this piece of advice. Never take a stool softener before you go out if you've got oysters for lunch. Because you're gonna wish you were coming but you're just going to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I got to go. Thank you very much. Oh, you my